Good morning, guys. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Let me adjust my microphone. Look at that. Wow, fancy. It's um Monday night for us, Tuesday morning for you guys. We're here in our living room, sitting here with my beautiful wife. They're probably wondering, where have you been? I've been right here. Where have we been? Tired. <laughs> yes. Tired, guys. What's new, right, guys? <clears throat> What's new? Well, today we actually had a funeral. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we went to a service and burial. Uh, my three younger kids, their grandma on their mother's side. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it... it uh, I mean, this is somebody that was that my my kids love. You know what I mean? And yeah. So it hurts me to see them hurt. Yeah. It always hurts to see our children hurt. Yeah, you know. And uh... I think I think any time um, anybody anybody passes away or any time life life moves on um it makes you think about life you yeah, know yourself your loved ones your, yeah, yeah it makes you think about how precious life is and it makes you really makes you think a lot yeah it makes you think about time it makes you ponder it makes you just um makes you think about how valuable time is and how precious life is yeah i agree it really does. Um, how much we take things for granted. It, it just makes you reevaluate a lot of things mm -hmm. about your own life a lot of the times. You know, it really does. You know, it's a... It's a yeah, it's a self-reflection because even back when we did Anthony De La Garza's, when we, you know, just any time, it... There's there's a sadness for the person that passed. There's a sadness for those closest to the one that passed. And then there's a self-reflection on your own immortality. Yeah. You know, and those you love. Yeah. You know? And uh, I think that's, that it makes it very somber. It, make, it just makes you think, you know? It makes yeah. you really think and, and appreciate the days, the minutes, the moments that you have. You know, and um, I think that's natural. Yeah. It's a natural thing. Yeah, you know? it is a natural thing. And then and then I think um, on top of that, it, it was so weird because we came home and, um, and then Eddie, Cholo Trucker. And he wants to do just, a Zoom with me. He wanted to do a Zoom with you, and you didn't even realize what the Zoom was going to be about, and it happened to be about life death. and death, death, yeah. about death. Mm. And it was so odd because of the topic, because we had just... I told him. I was like, I just got back from a funeral. Yeah. Like, and and we, I have been to many funerals in my life. Let me rephrase it. Many burials in my life. I had never seen where they actually the, they do the tractor and, and like... The whole process. The whole process. And yeah. Uh, I was like, whoa, you know, and I'm just like, I don't know if I could handle that, you know, for somebody close to me. Like, I don't know if I can handle that, you know, and so that was different, you know, and um, but yeah, guys, you know, just... Um, it just makes you think, you know. So it's it's been a somber day, I think. It's been a... Anytime you go to a, a burial or whatever, it kind of throws you off in your head. Like, you're in your own head, huh? Yeah. Yeah, you know. Um, we did, you know, uh, my parents went. Uh, one of my daughters went. And then the other three, my other three kids were there. And But we, anyways, after um, my parents and us and, and Angie went to go eat and... That was nice, you know, just to spend some time and have a burger. And, and then just had a really, um, really bittersweet talk with my 
with one of my sons. That lives here. That lives here. And you know, and, and um, it's a moment where, you know, sometimes you just got to realize that your, your sons, you know, you got to let them, let them fly sometimes, you know? Yeah. And they got to, um, they got to spread their wings and fly. And, you know, as a, as a mom, you know, sometimes those are moments where we just have to, um, it's not always easy guys, you know? You know, life, life is, uh, you know, as you guys know, those of you that are outside of California, you know that we got hit with storms like crazy. And, um, you know, it's funny because a few months ago we were like, oh my gosh, when's the winter coming? It was so hot this summer. <laughs> but the storms kept coming and coming. Like it was just right after another. And then I think it was on Saturday where the sun came up and we're like, wow, look at this, the nice day. You can see the blue skies, remember? Yeah. And then Sunday, another nice day. And then today, we're like counting the days. And I say that to say this, is that you can never appreciate a nice day until you have some storms. And then, you know what I mean? So I think the same thing in life. I think that life and death go hand in hand. Because without death, how can you really have life? Yeah. How can you ever have the good moments without having bad moments? Yeah. How can you ever appreciate the good unless you've had the bad? You know, and uh, it's just, uh, it goes with everything, man, you know. Um, you know, but, you know, the we've been really busy with the church guys. And, you know, when we started this devotionals, Back, what, 700-something videos ago? <laughs> yeah, almost 800. Yeah, and and man, you know, and, and we love doing this. We're going to continue to do these. Don't freak out. Yeah. Phyllis, don't freak <laughs> out. I'm just sharing. I'm just being honest is that when we started video, I think I started video one, and then you started popping your head in a couple videos later. Yeah. Originally, guys, this was something I was going to do. Maybe like the seventh video. Yeah, yeah. and um, but... As time has progressed, 700 videos later, the responsibilities of pastoring keep piling, keep piling, keep piling, keep piling. So we're in a different place from the first 100 videos compared to video 700. Yeah. And um, it, it, it sometimes, uh, those of you that are old school, Johnny Carson, Long, as I'm showing my age, he used to be a late night talk show. He would get this guy that would be balancing all these plates that are spinning on sticks. Yeah. One with his foot and his hand and trying to balance all these plates. And, and that's what it starts to feel like, you know. And then the added burden, man. The added burden. I'm not going to make a long thing about this, but the added burden of just keeping the church open. And let's just be honest, you know. And so that weighs heavy you know it weighs heavy and, and so that's why these things are hitting messes lately and i don't like it i don't um and then just the, the the busyness and these are things we didn't anticipate in video 30 in video 50 in video 100 and now it's like man you know and, and but there's we see so much fruit from these devotionals but there's, um, but I think just all beautiful things that that we see from it. But I think also there's um, there's so much ministry that happens behind the scenes that a lot of you guys don't get to see. Yeah, a lot, a lot, man. And mm. and there's even things that that happen behind the scenes that we don't we don't verbally get to tell you guys. You know, um, unfortunately, you know. Um, you know, when there's, we wish that we could be able to, to, you know, voice everything out on here. And unfortunately, you know, because um, we're not able to, you know, I wish we can give you guys every single detail of everything that we do um, ministry wise. 
But there, there is, you know, things that we do ministry wise that take up a pretty much right now, right now, literally right now, um, that take up pretty much a whole chunk of our, of our life right now. Yeah. And, um, but it's, it's part of what we're mandated to do. And, um, but we wouldn't have it any other way. And, you know, we're, it's, you know, the Lord calls us to, to go and, and to be examples and, and, and to, to live out, to be that living example. And, and I believe yeah. that that's what we're doing. And, you know, right now is not a time where we can actually, you know, to voice things out, but we're, we're, we're being that living example and it's going to take sacrifice and a lot of that. And, and, um, you know, guys, you guys will not always know what we're doing, you know, behind, behind the scenes, but just know that we love you guys. And, um, and know that we will always do our best to, we will always do our best to do the devotionals. And when we are able to, we will get to it. And, um, mm -hmm. but you know, just, just give us grace guys. Just give us grace. Yeah, you know, and there's one thing that I've been really contemplating in my head, you know, because, you know, YouTube is a, is a weird animal. <laughs> it's a weird animal yeah, it is. because because I want you to think about this, right? Is that some of you, to the best of the best, because of distance, obviously, it's not like you're sitting in our couch right now. But I think a lot of you have fairly, feel like you fairly know us. And, and you do, because this is who we are yeah. on camera, off camera, whatever. You know, but imagine, okay, imagine this. Imagine you go and have coffee with a very close friend of yours. And you're just talking about life, okay? And you're in a coffee shop, nobody's around, nobody's listening. So you can l really pour your heart out about how you feel about things and vice versa. Yeah. Now, imagine all of a sudden there's a camera there that anyone in the world can hear. People that hate you, people that don't like you, people that, that can misconstrue you, people that can misquote you, people that take your words out of context. Now this intimate conversation is wide open for the enemy, you know? And that's what YouTube is. YouTube is a camera that anyone... So it's hard. It's hard to, to be... Because I, I always wanted these devotionals to be like, hey, we're just sitting having coffee. At the same time, I know there's people that don't... that are anti-Christ. Mm-hmm. You know, and and because of that, I hold back. I'll tell you why. Because sooner or later, Christianity will be illegal. Sooner or later, they'll go after pastors that talk about certain things, and, and that's just the truth of it. And and I am not going to, <laughs> I am not going to give them the very fuel they need. Does that make sense? Well, yeah, it does. I mean, you saw that. Somebody wore a shirt to a mall just wearing, you know, a shirt that said, you know, Jesus Christ on it, you mm. know. The thing is a trust Jesus? Or? Trust Jesus, yeah. you know, and here's the thing. And they were, it was a fluorescent Jesus, a fluorescent green Jesus, a trust Jesus shirt at a mall. Minneapolis. The Mall of America. And here's the thing. Or Minnesota. So. Um yeah, it's well, Minneapolis is Minnesota. Yeah, but here's the thing. Um we wear we wear these shirts all the time. We wear shirts where, you I know, wear shirts as Christian right now. Yeah, that we're proclaiming Jesus, but at what point is it going to be do we, why do we have to walk on eggshells when we're proclaiming Christ, you know? We don't we should not be ashamed to proclaim Christ or worry about the shirts that we wear. We have every right. We have the freedom to do that. You know, I mean, why should we have to be ashamed of what we wear? You know, and it's and it's sad because 
you know, that day is coming where people are just going to, they're going to see us out there on the street and they're going to, they're going to identify us and be like, oh, I'm going to go ahead and make sure and point us out and be like, I'm going to go ahead and make sure to make that person's day a living hell just because they see us with that t-shirt. Yeah. You know, and, and, and we're going to be a target, but here's the thing. We shouldn't walk on eggshells guys, you know, and not live in fear in, in, and that's the thing is that we need to stop walking like we're we're walking on eggshells because of that. And and that and I think we need to turn things around and stop walking on eggshells. Yeah. Yeah. I was, you know, I, I was looking at stuff. I was I was looking on YouTube and, and looking at my ana, uh, analytics. Yeah. Analytics yeah. and uh, all that stuff. I'm just throwing this out. I did see one thing, right, that it said memberships. And I was like, what is this? I always see it. What is this? You know? And it'll be like like um, that, that fitness guy I watch. Yeah. Like, he has his YouTube channel, puts content out there, but then he has memberships where he has videos more intimate that, are, that nobody, can, nobody on the outside can scrutinize. So he's able to be more himself. He does more lives that those people can see, more things like that. And... And whatnot, and I was just I was looking at that, and I'm just I I I wanna. As you guys know, you guys have been watching Sunday services, and I said this uh, uh, I said this year is a year to go deeper. Yeah. And I love these these devotionals. I love when we open the scriptures and break things down. But I'm be honest with you. There's deeper, but because because of this, hey, we're at a coffee shop, but there's a camera so the world can see us. I hold back. And it's just stuff I'm thinking about, guys. I, I want to I wanna be able to, I just want to go deeper. And just I'll just leave it at that. I'm just trying to explore ways to go deeper with you guys. Because many of you are, you have been built up. You have been edified. You have, you know, with even these devotionals, Sunday service, Wednesday Bible study, you know, and, and like, like this thing I'm doing with the fivefold ministry, I'm going so deep, you know, like like never before, you know, like here's the thing, like when we did, um, what was the last book we did? Judges. Judges. Judges, right? Yeah. For instance, Judges, I love Judges, I love doing Judges, but it's, it was more of uh, expository teaching, meaning scripture by scripture by scripture, but allowing the Holy Spirit, you know, to just, I wasn't going into like, oh, this chapter, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a whole week study on it because I can't. Yeah, I can't because there's so much ministry going on. There's so much this going on, so much that going on. But like for this fivefold ministry, I'm I'm forcing time because I really want to do a really well. I want people to get a really good understanding of the fivefold ministry, you know. But it it it's hard. It it is hard because in doing ministry and doing this, doing that, it, it gets hard, you know. And mm-hmm. uh, anyways, um. I just want a way to be able to do devotionals for people to continue to watch us and then have a group of people that really gets poured into with no holds barred, no nothing. And I'm just trying to figure it out. Well, I think we have our, we have our, there's a core group that, um, like there is a core group that we already, that are, have been with us for quite some time, Mm -hmm. you know? And I know they would be the ones that would always, that are willing to go deeper because they've been with us for so many yeah. years already, yeah. you know? So I think that would be good for that core mm-hmm. group that are, you know, from different states already that would really, really, that would like to probably go deeper, especially in a lot of the things that we have been studying a lot lately. Mm-hmm. So. Well, I looked into, like, you know, a lot of, pi- a lot of uh, YouTubers would be like, oh, look at my Patreon. I'm like, what is that? Yeah. So I actually looked it up, and basically it's a subscription, and then they upload videos somewhere else other than YouTube. That way YouTube doesn't filter them. And Patreon members, then they get allow them to see that, and then I was looking at membership and just different things. I'm looking at different options, guys, because I want to go deeper for those that want to go deeper. But at the same time, be able to do devotionals, be you know, the same thing, not taking nothing away from what we're doing now. But add an extra segment of deeper, 
yeah. you know. And uh, I really liked so. F and I didn't really wasn't feeling the Patreon thing. I wasn't really feeling it. I was like, eh, I don't really like that. I just looked at it because I know a lot of YouTubers. They keep mentioning it. I was like, what are, what are they talking about? And, and then, for those, and for those, honestly, I think I would prefer for those who even that even do give the um, like the super chats or something. I would prefer that they'd pay a membership instead. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, instead because YouTube takes that thirty yeah. percent anyways, and I'd rather them pay a membership than give a and super that's chat I'm, that's going to take the thirty percent. That's what I'm saying. You and know, a membership is like a it's a monthly thing. But they get exclusive videos, and then they get, like, say any video I put, they get it first. The devotionals or whatever, they get that first. They, yeah. you, could, you could go live, and it only be to members. Yeah. They get special emojis. They get special, um, uh, like, little things where uh, next to their name, that they're members. Uh, th so I'm just looking at this stuff, guys. Yeah, because I've seen I've seen sometimes people that'll be like, hey, like it's twenty bucks for membership, but if somebody's gonna go give a a a ten dollars a ten dollars or a twenty dollars super chat or whatever super cat that we do, they might as well put it into a into the membership or something because I, I think it's it's so much better because YouTube taking thirty percent of that. Yeah. yeah so. Yeah. It, there's things to think about, guys, because yeah. I think that that's key. I think that's important. Um, I bet you there's a lot of stuff, especially stuff you see. Um, I'm not comfortable with it because I don't know who's watching. A lot of stuff that we see going on in the world, a lot of stuff we see going on in, in just in our society, you know, that I don't touch on because I'm not going to give the enemy fuel to try to hang me. Yeah. You know, but I want to go deeper, guys. And uh, at the same time, you go, you guys know that at the church, you know, what I mean, the church, we're, we're over here trying to get people to be involved so it can stay open. And at the same time, over here on the side, you know, I'm just like, man, I got to paint this. I got to do that. I got to sell a copy of this. I got to hopefully sell a book. And and I'm stressed. And that, that takes me away. You know, and I'm just like, man, I wish there was something I can do that everybody benefits. Everybody, you know, and I don't know. Yeah. I'm just, I'm talking out loud because we're just having coffee, right? I'm just talking to friends, you know, and. Are we going to do a scripture? I want to do, well, I wanted to do Ecclesiastes. You hadn't even talked to me it about it. It just came so. to me right now, but you'll know, you'll know why. You'll okay. see it. I promise you. Yeah, he didn't talk to me about this, guys. I didn't have a verse, but as we were talking, something you said actually made me think of this, and I can't find Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes what? I don't know. I can't find it yet. It's such a... Oh, there it is. There, chapter 3, verse 1. Ecclesiastes one through eight. Three, one. one through eight? Yeah. Okay. It says this, For everything there's a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek, and a time to lose. A time to keep, and a time to cast away. A time to tear, and a time to sow. A time to keep silence, and a time to speak. A time to love, and a time to hate. A time for war, and a time for peace. <sighs> Uh, David re is reading out of the ESV, and I'm going to be reading out of the message. There's an opportune time to do things, a right time for everything on the earth, a right time for birth and another for death, a right time to plant and another to reap, a right time to kill and another to heal, a right time to destroy and another to construct, a right time to cry 
and another to laugh, a right time to lament, and another to cheer, a right time to make love, and another to abstain, a right time to embrace, and another to part, a right time to search, and another to count your losses, a right time to hold on, and another to let go, a right time to rip out, and another to mend, a right time to shut up, and another to speak up, a right time to love, and another to hate, a right time to wage war, and another to make peace. See, I told you. That's good. There's a, there's a time and there's a season. For everything. For everything, guys. And you got to just learn to read the signs. You got to learn to see which way the wind is blowing. You got to be able to see all that, all that stuff, you know. And, um, you know, and, and I, the reason I thought of this was because when we were talking and then you brought up a cholo trucker and death and, 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 and life and it goes hand in hand. Uh, or yeah, talking does. about a good day and a bad day. You know, there's a time for everything. Can you can you imagine if you um if you always went ag against the grain? Can you imagine a piece of wood? And the grain is all going one way and you rubbed your hand against Ouch. it going Spinous. The, the opposite way, all the splinters you'd get. Or the waves going one way and you trying to swim against the other way, you would never, you'd be going against the waves, you know, or you'd be just constantly always going against the grain, always going against something. You're always going to be going against resistance. Yeah. It's always going to be harder, guys always going to be harder and it's the same thing with the whirlwind whenever there's a whirlpool or anything like that did you know that when there's a whirlpool or something when you fight it and you stiffen when you stiffen up you actually get sucked in but do you know that when you loosen up mm -hmm. it actually just spits you right out it Boom, just spits you out. You cannot go against the grain. Yeah. You cannot go against it. Stop fighting it. And yeah, and I think that um, there's seasons in church. Like I remember talking to Pastor Larry, who's our vice president of Grace International. It was maybe, what, three years ago when he said, um, Sometimes you got to prune. And I'm like, what? You might be able to say that because you got, you know, 300 people in your congregation. And he's like, no, you don't understand. He goes, without pruning, there's never growth. Don't be afraid to prune. And I'm like, that sounds harsh. He goes, that's something that God said in nature. You want more fruit? You got to prune. You know, and, 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 and at that time, it goes with this. And sometimes there's a season to pluck, and sometimes there's a season to grow, you know, and vice versa. And there's always wisdom in that. And um, it even says there's time to laugh and there's a time to cry, you know. And, and it just lets you see uh, Ecclesiastes, when, you know, it, it's, it's deep what it's saying because it truly fits your whole life. You know, um, for instance, uh, I was looking at my aquarium. It, it needs some tending to. And uh, the I remember f maybe two months ago, those beautiful leaves, there's this plant I have in there, big, beautiful leaves. and um, But they were getting spots everywhere. And you basically, and then there was little tiny leaves. And basically, that giant leaf that has spots that's growing old is actually taking nutrients away from the new leaves. And I was watching this video and it says, you got to cut that stuff. As big as those leaves are, it's taking nutrients away from the new leaves. And the new leaves will be stunted. And I was like, man, I got these long scissors for aquarium plants. So I did it. And I felt, I was like, oh man, I'm taking, I took like six of those big long ones off. Can you see how bright those bright ones? 
I don't know if you can see Oh, yeah. Them. Those are all new leaves. Really? Those, those are little tiny, and now they're like this huge. Yeah, Just, they're real. And they're, they're bright. like fluorescent. Yeah, they're bright green. Yeah. And that happened because of that. You know, and I'm even looking at it now, and on the back side of that plant, I see all these, maybe about eight of them. See, now I'm not afraid of plucking because I see the reward. Yeah. You know, and uh, it looks pretty. Yeah. You know, and I think the same thing happens in our life. There's things you got to pluck out of your life in order to see growth. And many of you are saying, man, I'm not seeing spiritual growth. I'm not seeing spiritual growth. Have you ever considered that because this other stuff is taking the nutrients away from the new growth and, and, and you're not, not going to see new growth until you pluck that stuff off. But once you once you prune, growth happens. It happens in ministry, it happens in church, it happens in your spiritual life, it happens in your marriage, it happens in everything. There's times where we're just like, man, we got to plug some stuff, you know? And I, I think it applies to everything. Yeah. You know, you know, you know what's sad is, um, what's sad is when you, when you, when a person I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use it metaphorically speaking too, though. But when a, when a person has a, when has, it's almost like when a person has a wound yeah. and, you know, they, they add salt to a wound and, you know, and they never let it heal and they continue adding, you know, more and more to that, to that wound and it's like they've never let it heal and everything. And it's like they just put a band-aid on it. And, and it's like, you know, you, it's like you got to let, take off that, take off that band-aid to let yeah. it heal, you know, and let, let, it, let, it, let it dry out so that that wound can heal, you know, so that way it can, because even with a scar, even a scar can become something beautiful because it could become a beauty scar. It could become, you know, it's it's a reminder. Yeah. You know, don't be afraid of having a, a, a beauty scar. Don't be afraid of allowing a scar let it letting it be a, a new beginning, you yeah. know. And I think people sometimes are afraid of of new beginnings. They're afraid of the scars. They're afraid of the reminders. Yeah. And and don't be afraid of it, you know, because reminders are okay because it, it lets you remember where you came from. Yeah. And and it's okay, guys, because what was once a wound will, you know, be a scar to something that was that was once, you know, hard but become something beautiful. And let it be a beauty scar to you, man, because it's just a reminder of what once was, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like, I love that. It's just. You never noticed? You haven't noticed? No. I, I keep looking at it because it's beautiful. Yeah. It's, it's so bright, you guys. You should take a picture of it just like <laughs> that. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I need to do more tending to it. But here's the difference, though. Is that, guys, I've had aquariums all my life. I'm going to take a picture of it, man. I've had aquariums all my life, right? But I never have had an aquarium with real plants. And um, this is my first time. How long have I had real plants now? Like fully new plants? Like in the middle of COVID, huh? Look how bright that looks on there. And the lights are on. Yeah. yeah. That looks crazy. You know, and... Um, but... It needs it again, and not only that, but all my other plants need it. But you know what? Now I'm not afraid. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna go crazy with my pruning scissors, you know, tomorrow, because I know, in two months, how that tank's gonna look. You know, and and, and imagine apply that to your spiritual life. What can you cut out today, right? That in two months, three months, something else is gonna flourish in your life. You know, and, and I love, man, I can't, there was this meme I saw. I forgot what it was pertaining to. Maybe it was toward losing weight or exercise. I don't remember what it was. Um, but it pertains to anything. It said, the goal you have today in six months 
You're either going to regret that you did nothing, or you're going to have joy because you made that decision six months prior. One thing or another. See, the time is going to happen. Yeah. In two months from now, that tank is going to look really bad if I don't do nothing, or it's going to look amazing. But the choice is mine. Well, you got to take a step in order to walk a mile. Yeah. You got to make the first step. Yeah. yeah. You can't be afraid to prune stuff in your life. You can't be afraid to prune people in your life. Yeah, I said it. Yeah. You know, um, because sometimes people will stunt your growth. Yeah, they'll hold you back. You know, and, and that's just that's just being real. That's being real, you know, and um, but sometimes, put it this way, sometimes there's people that should be planted in your life. But, but there would never be growth until you prune. That's just, that's the harsh truth that Pastor Larry told me, you know. And um, and I love what one time this old school, I'm talking old school T.D. Jakes. I don't know about the new T.D. Jakes. I don't know. I'll keep that opinion to myself. But old school T.D. Jakes, I remember one time he said, he said, if somebody can walk away from you, let them walk. They were never a part of your destiny in the first place. If they can walk, they were never a part of your destiny. He goes, don't, don't go running after people. People walk out the door, let them walk. Yeah, let them go. Because they were never, ever a part. Yeah, if, somebody, if something is your destiny, they, they, they're not going to leave. Yeah. We you don't know, need to so. be begging for them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I learned that. I remember I learned that in prison actually. I learned that and that's something I, I have kept even till today. To this day, you know what I mean? And and um Sharon has seen me do it. Yeah, you know, she's seen me I'm, do I'm, it. I'm I've I've learned yeah. <laughs> I've seen him do it guys and I've I've learned a lot from from just, you know, I've learned a lot from my husband. I've 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 grown some thick skin from this man, I'll tell you. <laughs> you know, because when I came in, I I would get emotional. I'd get hurt very easy and and everything. And I've I've grown some thick skin, I'll tell you. I think I'll Yeah, life is too short, you know? I mean sometimes you gotta say kick rocks. <laughs> life yeah. is too short. There is there is I remember okay. I remember way in the beginning years ago. Um, I, I I was spinning my wheels on this brother, trying to as he kept going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I'm spinning my wheels, trying to figure out how I can get him saved and how I can do that. And you know what I essentially realized I was doing? Because there was about five people in the church that were hungry for the things of God. They were so hungry. They wanted to learn. They wanted to fellowship. But you know what? I didn't have time for them. Because I was trying to save the one that to this day is just rebellious. He's not around, but I, I, I see, you know, I see because Facebook is a small world. You know what I mean? I see and, and do I cheer for this person to finally get it right? Yeah, I do, but from a distance. Because I realize a lot of times you burn a whole lot of energy and the whole time there's there's somebody else that is just hungry for the things of God, hungry for fellowship, hungry for those things. And, and you, will, you will tire yourself out and not have time for those that the Lord has sent to you. That's yeah. just, that's real talk. I keep putting my face close because I'm like, like serious when I put my face close. <laughs> I think it's getting late because I'm getting silly now. Yeah, he is getting silly, guys. So, but yeah, guys, that membership is, is something that I'm I'm looking into. I don't know. Maybe nobody maybe nobody wants to be a member. I don't know. I'll be your member, babe. <laughs> you know, because it's 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 truly because now people are making a small investment. Babe, I'll be your you member. Know? Okay. Okay? I'm your number one member. All right. All right. And uh but I, I think that's something we're thinking about um, that sounds cool, like exclusive lives, exclusive videos. I'm gonna be your member. I'm gonna be yeah. the gold member. Okay. All right. I don't know. 
I'm going to be VIP Let member. Let me know what you guys think, because if that idea is dumb, then why, um, you know, why even continue looking into it? Let me know what you guys think. I don't know. What do I know? I know nothing. Oh but... my, all I, I don't know nothing. I just know Jesus. I just know <laughs> Christ and Christ crucified. Jesus is Lord. That's all I know. That's all mm -hmm. I need to know. Amen. Amen, guys. Well, um, I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. We're good. All right, guys. I think uh, hopefully this turned out edifying, something that builds you, something that encourages you. Something to have with your little cafecito, with your hot chocolate, yeah, with sure your you know, sister, avena. Sister Phyllis took advice and put, put. she sent a picture of this coffee. Did I show you this coffee? Did she send it to it. both of us or to me? I, I saw it. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Or Because sometimes I don't know what that sister be doing. <laughs> But it said coffee con canela. I saw it. With cinnamon, right? She sent it. Amen. I sure saw it. I sure did. With your own two peepers? I saw I it with saw my it own two peepers. With my own two peepers. I sure did. Miss Sharon. <laughs> Lily. Oh, gonna, God. That yeah. girl. We oh. want to tell you about Lily, but we'll save it for another video. Yeah. But, we will, guys. She's a little blessing. Yeah. And a headache she's, at the same she's, time. She's kind of part of the reason why we're really tired lately. She keeps us on our toes. That's yeah. that's full show. She calls me Miss Sharon. Miss Sharon. Oh, she she makes me feel fifty one. <laughs> <laughs> Sheesh. She makes me feel sixty one. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why she makes you feel. If anything, I'm the one that's doing all the running around besides you just driving. That, that's tiring. You're the Uber. I know. <laughs> I have become an Uber driver of a nine-year-old. <laughs> yes. A chauffeur. He's the Uber driver and I'm the maid <laughs> and the cook. Man. And everything else. All right, guys. Yeah. God Bye, bless guys. you. See you later. See you tomorrow. Yes. And uh, that's it. Bye. We love you guys. Bye.